What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today on The Engineer Next Door, we're going to explain why I installed a ground rod on the last video. Simply put, ground rods don't last forever. Your grounding system is like your home's electrical insurance plan. If anything goes wrong, this is what this system's for. The main intent for your home's grounding system is to detect and clear faults. And what faults are is current not flowing in the wires that they're supposed to. In the US, there's nearly 50,000 home fires due to electrical faults. This is why your home's grounding system is so important. So there's two parts to your grounding electrode system that I like to think about, the inside of the house and outside of the house. And today we're mostly gonna talk about outside of the house because that's where your ground rod is installed. So what is a ground rod? A ground rod is simply an electrode installed into the earth to create a path for static electricity to dissipate and also to regulate high voltage fluctuations like lightning strikes. Dissipating electricity with houses that have gas in it is real important because a big enough static buildup has enough potential energy to spark your gas line and blow up your propane tank. This is why gas lines are important to be grounded. I have my incoming gas line going into my house grounded uh, to a bonding kit here. And this is why we made the grounding electrode a number four wire is because I made a grounding electrode conductor connection here at this bonded terminal. And this wire that goes out to your ground rods doesn't need to be bigger than a number six. But since this connection is a grounding electrode conductor, I size this to a number four. If you only ran a wire from your electrical panel out to your ground rods, then you only need to make it a number six. But in essence, making this a number four so you can be able to uh, bond other things to it is always a good idea. A common misconception about ground rods is this is where ground faults go. The ground rod system does help with ground fault mitigation, but this isn't the main path that ground faults take in your home. Electricity is always trying to get back to its source, which in your home is the wires coming in from the utility company. This is why we bond our grounds and neutrals in our panel so electricity can get back to its source in a fault condition. One of the main paths in your home for a ground fault to clear is the ground conductor in Romex. This is why in the 2020 National Electrical Code, most of your branch circuits in your house needs to be GFCI ground fault circuit interrupter protected. If you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, comment, subscribe. It would be much appreciated. Moving on to some material considerations. As you can see, my existing ground rod here is made out of galvanized steel. There are three types of ground rod material that are most common. Galvanized steel, stainless steel, and copper ground rods. And according to Erico, who's the main ground rod supplier that you'll find at Home Depot, a galvanized steel ground rod should last about 20 years, a copper ground rod should last about 40 years, and a stainless steel ground rod should last about 55 years or so. It's not that the ground rod has corroded so bad that it won't work, but I want to treat this as the life expectancy of a ground rod. And since my home is from the 70s, it was time to replace the ground rod. I chose a copper ground rod, so theoretically, I shouldn't have to reinstall another ground rod for 40 more years. Now we're going to touch on why I installed a second ground rod to our existing single ground rod system. The 2020 NEC requires you to install two grounding electrodes unless you can prove a single electrode can provide less than 25 ohms to ground. And for the extra $30, I like to just install a second ground rod to know that my house's grounding electrode system is up to snuff. It's good to know that your soil actually has a certain resistivity. And depending on your soil's resistivity, that impacts how much current can flow through it. And depending on what kind of soil you have in your area, that might dictate what type of material ground rod you choose. Okay, and last thing I want to touch on is the use of copper versus aluminum in your grounding system. The NEC only allows you to use copper for your underground grounding connection, and you cannot use aluminum. Aluminum doesn't patina like copper. It will corrode underground when in contact with the soil. So this is why aluminum is not allowed to be used for any part of your underground grounding system. When copper oxidizes, it forms a protective layer called patina. 
This layer is what gives copper its strength against corrosion and lasts over 40 years underground. And my recommendation for any grounding system is use copper at any time possible. To bring this full circle, if your home is older than 30 years old, I would recommend inspecting your ground rod system and also your grounding system to help keep your home safe. That's going to wrap up this video on ground rods. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.